Hello everyone, it's Dr. David. How many of you struggle when communicating with other nurses or healthcare providers? I sure did when I got out of nursing school. That first year was a nightmare. But today I'm going to do a quick video on how to use SBAR to help you communicate with other healthcare providers. Don't want to miss it. So I remember getting out of nursing school, doing my orientation with my preceptor, and then that day arrived where I had to give report. Now, when I got out of nursing school back in 2006, they didn't use SBAR, we just went by the system. So I learned how to give report by starting with my patient's history, surgical history, any allergies, and then beginning with vital signs, then going to neuro, cardiac, respiratory, uh, GI, GU, ortho skin so that's how i learned to do report but then a few years later they introduced s bar which s is for situation b is for background a is for assessment and r is for recommendation i love this way because it organizes your thoughts you're able to communicate with other healthcare providers in a more organized way so i'm going to go over each of these so you know what each of them mean and what is included for the sbar and then i'm going to give you a sample report using sbar and i really hope that this helps you so let's get started Remember, the SBAR is a powerful tool that is used to improve the effectiveness of communication between individuals. The S in SBAR stands for situation. Here, you are going to state what is happening right now. You are going to clearly and briefly define the situation. Remember, what is happening right now? And don't forget, you need to identify yourself. Identify your patient, their room number, and unit that you are calling from. Now we move on to background, which is the B in S bar. Here you're going to state what has happened to this patient during this admission. You're going to provide a clear background on this patient, which includes the date of admission, why were they admitted, does the patient have any allergies, what is the code status, are they a DNR, which is do not resuscitate, or are they a full code. You're going to provide a recent set of vital signs as well as a list of current medications, is the patient on any IV fluids, did they have any lab work drawn, and have they had any studies, for example, a chest x-ray, a CAT scan. Also, you want to state what are the treatment goals or plan of care for your patient. For example, is the patient going to a rehab facility for physical therapy as opposed to home. Now we are up to A in SBAR, which is assessment. So we are going to talk about what we found during our nursing assessment of our patient. What do we believe to be the problem? Here we're going to include a current assessment, current vital signs and labs. You're going to include what has happened during your shift when caring for this patient. And here is the perfect opportunity for you to state how have you advanced the plan of care as this patient's nurse? What was the patient's response? And here you should give a statement of what your professional conclusion is. So is the patient stable? Are they unstable? Or are they worsening in their condition? You are basically going to provide information about what did and did not happen during your shift. So now we are up to R for recommendation. So here you're going to tell the person with whom you're communicating what you need from him or her in a clear and relevant way. So what do you need from them? What are your suggestions to advance the patient's plan of care? Are there any new or urgent needs that need to be followed up? Are there any new orders that need to be changed or reviewed? So here you're basically stating what you think needs to happen for your patient. So to review, S bar, S is for situation, B is for background, A is assessment, and R is the recommendation. So you can use S bar when you are giving uh, the end of shift report to an incoming nurse, or you can also use S bar when you're trying to locate and speak to another healthcare provider regarding a situation that is happening with your patient. Now, when you are doing that type of communication, it's going to be more specific. So instead of the more detailed SBAR that you would provide an incoming nurse that's going to be relieving your shift, 
when you are speaking over the phone or to another healthcare provider regarding a problem is going to be more specific. So I'm going to provide you two different examples. One where I am going to give report to an incoming nurse and another one when I am calling a healthcare provider regarding a situation that I'm having with a patient. So here is our first SBAR example. This is a phone call between a nurse and a physician. And this is the patient's complaint. Patient complains of increasing shortness of breath and is complaining of chest pain. So you as the nurse for this patient has to do something about this, right? Hello, Dr. Smith. This is Margarita, the registered nurse calling from ABC Hospital about your patient, Maria Smith. Here's the situation. Mrs. Smith is having increasing dyspnea and is complaining of chest pain. The supporting background information is that she had a total knee replacement two days ago and about two hours ago she began complaining of chest pain. Her pulse is 120, her respirations are 22, and her blood pressure is 130 over 54. She is restless and short of breath and her pulse sucks on room air is 92%. My assessment of the situation is that she may be having a cardiac event or a pulmonary embolism. I recommend that you see her immediately and that we start her on O2 stat. Do you agree? Now let's do a nurse to nurse end of shift report. I will first say the report in its entirety, how it would normally sound, and then I will break it up by SBAR, situation, background, assessment, and recommendation. Mrs. M is a 79-year-old woman that arrived in the emergency room by ambulance from her home. She is a no code and has no allergies. She did have a fall from her bed and has dementia. She is not complaining of any pain, but she was given morphine at 1700. The x-ray shows that she has a hip fracture. Her skin is intact and she is receiving 0.9 normal saline in her right forearm via a number 22 gauge IV. Vital signs are stable and the family has been notified. Surgery is a possibility for the morning, but the surgeon has not confirmed this yet. Due to the possibility of having surgery, I recommend that you keep the patient NPO and also update the family when you know if the surgery will actually happen. Now let's break it down by SBAR, situation, background, assessment, and recommendation. S, situation. This patient, Mrs. D, is a 79-year-old patient who arrived a few hours ago from her home after falling. B, background. She has a history of dementia and is a no-code patient and does not have any allergies. A for assessment. The x-ray showed a broken hip on the right side. On assessment, her skin is intact, her vital signs are stable, and she does not have any complaints of pain. Although they did give her morphine at 1800, she has 0.9 normal saline infusing to a number 22 gauge right forearm IV site, and there are no other abnormalities with her assessment. Our recommendation, there is a possibility that she might have surgery in the morning, so she needs to be kept NPL tonight. I recommend updating the family when we know for sure if surgery will happen. So you're gonna use the S-bar when there's change of shift, when you're leaving the unit for lunch or a meeting, when you're transferring a patient from one unit to another unit, and when a patient's going to and from departments for surgery or testing, because the person that's receiving your patient needs to know a little bit about your patient in order to care for them. And let's review. The S in S-bar is for situation. You need to clearly and briefly describe the current situation. B for background, you want to provide a clear, relevant background information on your patient. A for assessment, you want to state your professional conclusion based on the situation and background. And R is for recommendation, you want to tell the person with whom you're communicating what you need from them in order for them to help your patient. And it has to be done in a clear and relevant way. Here are two SBAR examples. Now remember, your facility may have their own, so make sure that you're using the appropriate SBAR format. Well, I hope that you find this video of great use to you. Make sure you like this video, share with your family and friends, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. In that comment box below, make sure you leave your feedback on any questions that you may have because I do look through them and I personally answer all of your questions. Okay, well, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to press that bell for notifications. Bye.